Let's have a look. 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 Let's have a Okay, how do you turn this up? How do you turn the volume up? Can't hear Volume. Hello, hello, yeah. The question is, where was I when Jesus Christ found me? What was I doing? What was I doing in this world before I came to Jesus? The truth of the matter is, I was doing nothing. I had nothing in this world. I had no meaning. I had no purpose. I had nothing to wake up to. I had no true friends. Sure, I had people I'd get high and get drunk with, but there was no one really there for me. No one my age who was there for me, who I could be honest with, not just to have a laugh, but to talk about the problems of this life. There was no one for me. There was no hope for me in this world. There was nothing for me in this world. But Jesus saw something in me. He saw a child. He saw his child inside of me, yet to be formed. And there I was, depressed, suicidal, just like some of you are today. Some of you today are wondering, what's the point in all this? Why am I here in this world? If you're wondering this, there's good news. The good news is this, that eternal life, eternal life is this, can be given to yours right now. You can receive the gift of eternal life, not by obeying a thousand laws, not by being a righteous or perfect man, for we cannot be perfect. There is only one thing, grace. We all need grace, my friends. We all need grace. And when Jesus Christ found me, I had no other hope. I had no other purpose. There was no other plan. There was no prosperity in my life. There was nothing in my life that could warrant pride. There was nothing in my life that could give me meaning. Every day was a pointless quest to wake up and get high, to get drunk and go to bed. There was no purpose to anything. But Jesus Christ stepped down one night. Jesus Christ gave me his Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ gave me the gift of his Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. The world does not know. But Jesus, Jesus has given the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. The Holy Spirit to comfort you. He's called the Comforter. The very being of God himself. To come and dwell in you. To come and dwell in you. Why? How can we receive this gift of peace? This peace that we're all searching for. You may not realize it, but you're searching for peace of mind. You're searching for something more than what you've got. You're searching for hope. You're searching for meaning. You're searching for value. And I'm here to tell you today, not that I'm better than you in any single way, for we all fall in sin. We all fall into sin. But one thing I have, my friends, I have Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ, the reality, the truth, the reason why we live is to bring glory to Jesus Christ. The reason why we live is to love our Creator. The reason why we live is to spend eternity with Jesus, bowing down and worshipping the Almighty. When Jesus found me, I had nothing. There was nothing in this world for me before Jesus entered my life. Some of you may or may not be able to reconcile that. Some of you may think I'm doing pretty well for myself. Some of you may think I've got friends, I've got a good education, I've got a good job. Yes, my friend, but do you have the meaning of life? My friend, do you have the meaning of life? You may be rich, you may have good friends, you may have all these things, but do you have purpose? When you're laying in bed on a night, what do you think about? What do you think about when you're laying on bed on your night? Think about this tonight, that you are an eternal being. When your eyes will not let you sleep, these words will t come back to you. Every single one of you are an eternal being. You will live forever, either in heaven, in paradise, in perfect peace, where there is no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying, no more hostility. Oh my friends, the Bible clearly teaches that there is a place called hell. 
There is a place called hell, which is Jesus Christ himself said, it is hell fire. Hell is hell fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus Christ will come back to judge the world in righteousness. Jesus Christ is coming back to judge this world. But he's coming back for those who love him to rapture them and take them away out of the tribulation. But you only, only need to do one thing. Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the truth. And Jesus Christ is the life. No man come up to the Father but by Jesus Christ. No man, no man has a relationship with our Creator apart from Jesus Christ. No one has the forgiveness of sins apart from the blood of Jesus Christ. No one has a hope for anything in the future apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's his name we proclaim. This isn't about us. We're not stood here to tell you about some idea we came up with. We're here to tell you this ancient truth that Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ is the reason you live. Jesus Christ is look calling every single one of you. Every single one of you is saying, come to me. Come to me and I will give you rest. The gentle saviour, the gentle shepherd who died upon a cross. He died upon a cross for every single one of our sins. Every evil that mankind has ever done was laid upon the perfect one. Every sin we've ever committed was laid upon the perfect son of God. He is perfect and you, your heart knows this. Deep down in your heart, your conscience bears witness, not your head, but your conscience bears witness that Jesus Christ is God. You may not acknowledge it, you may dampen your conscience, you may say, no, no, my head's going to do my thinking. But we all know, my friends, that in the deep parts of your conscience, you know that Jesus Christ is God. Deep down in the parts of your conscience, you know that there is a heaven and there is a hell. Deep down within you, you know that Jesus Christ is Lord, but we have been deceived. I was deceived for 20 years of my life. I thought I was an animal. I thought I was a monkey. I thought I was just a product of chance. And then I woke up, and I'm calling you all today. Wake up, my friends. Evolution is a lie. It is a lie from its very inscription. It is a lie to every single one of your souls. Don't listen to the lies of the education system who propound this theory, telling you that we are all just animals, as my, as my brother said earlier, so that we can hide from God. So we can hide from God in evolution. Just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, our, grandpa our, our parents, our first parents, when they heard the voice of God walking in the garden, they fled and they were scared of God. Just like we all are scared of God because we're guilty, we're sinners, we, we, we deserve to be condemned. We deserve nothing but wrath. But God looked upon us, a fallen human race, with no hope, with no potential for eternal life, with no hope of anything other than hell. And God sent his son to die upon the cross at Calvary for every single one of you, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse you from every single sin you've ever committed. And I'm not here proclaiming my righteousness, for I have no righteousness of my own. I have nothing great about me, apart from Jesus Christ who lives within me. He's the only thing. He's the reason I live. He's the reason I wake up. I tried everything this world tells me to do, just like you all are doing right now. We are all searching for meaning. And this world, this high street, these streets, the television, the music, the media, everything is throwing deception upon you. So you take this, this is what you need in life. Be rich, just be like the rich people. This is what you need in life. No, 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 my friends. The root cause of any problem in your life is a separation from God. The root cause of any problem. And my friends, Jesus Christ came that we may know the Father that we may know the perfect God who created us, the one who loves you, 
who died for you. The one who shed his blood for every single one of you. He sees your misery right now. He sees your pain right now. He knows the pains that you are experiencing. He sees your loneliness. He sees your attempt to try and please man. He sees everything that you despise in this life. Everything that you despise, which breaks you as a person. He sees that and yet he still loves you. And he wants to tell you all today, I will deliver. I will deliver you all. I will deliver you from this present evil age. Jesus Christ will deliver you from all the lies of hell. Jesus Christ will deliver you from all the lies of man. Jesus Christ will give you his Holy Spirit. And then, and only then, can you take a stand for the truth. Only when you receive the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Truth, can you take a stand for the truth. We despise liars. We despise liars. Do not serve the devil, for he is the father of lies. Every lie he is the father of. But it is impossible for God to lie. Who has promised us, who has promised us eternal life. Eternal life. I cannot barely begin to comprehend it. I, I comprehend a fraction of eternity. But I know that how fire, how fire is eternal. But so is perfect peace in heaven. God has given you all a choice. Where will you spend eternity? Where will you spend eternity? We are not robots. We all have a choice. We all have a decision that we have to make sooner or later. Will I accept Jesus or will I reject the perfect Son of God? We all have to make this choice. Just like Pilate said to, to the Jews. He said, what then will you have me to do with Jesus, who you call Christ? The message is to you today. What will you do with Jesus, who is called Christ? Will you reject him? Will you mock him? Will you deny his very existence? Or will you humble yourselves and say, Lord Jesus, I don't understand everything, but I'm willing to accept that you are God. And that's all it takes. Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation and shall not come into condemnation, but has passed from death into life. My friends, I don't know what your blind spots are. I don't know what your grips are, but I suffer from them as well. I've suffered from horrendous addictions in my life, and there are things I still need to clean up. But I know, I know, the second I beg for mercy, Father forgives me, like that. I am forgiven. The second I beg for mercy, he forgives me. He's not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Hell wasn't made for man. Hell was made for the devil and his angels. But stubborn man, stubborn man refuses to look love Jesus. Stubborn man declares himself to be God. Stubborn man wants nothing to do with our Creator. And stubborn man chooses rejection from all the gifts of God. Rejection from everything you've ever experienced that has been good. That is what hell is, my friends. It's eternal darkness. It's complete absence of God. It's the complete absence of God. You may say, well, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. You may say, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. But I ask you this one question. I ask you this one question. Jesus Christ, is he God? Jesus Christ who was seen, who was touched, who was heard, who was hugged, who was hugged. The only God man has ever known who was seen with his eyes, who was handled. We have a God who became man 2,000 years ago. We serve the living God. And make no mistake about it, God will be handing out rewards one day. God will be handing out rewards one day to those servants of his who have taken up the cross and said, Lord Jesus, I don't care what it takes, I'm going to serve you. Lord Jesus, I don't care if everyone hates me. I don't care if I never have a single friend in this world ever again. But please, Lord, let me become your friend. Let me become your child, God. And this is what God wants for all of us. God wants all of us to come to repentance. God wants all of us to come to a knowledge of the truth. The Word of God says that He made Him who knew no sin to be
be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Our parents sinned, therefore we all inherited a sin nature. That's why you're inclined to evil. That's why your thoughts are more despicable than you could ever talk about. But my friends, God still loves you. God still loves you even though your thoughts are evil. Even though the thoughts of his heart are evil only from his youth. God still loves us. And the reason this happened is because our parents sinned and ate the forbidden fruit. That's why we all have a sin nature. But the Bible says, just as through one man, Adam, death reigned, so also through one man, righteousness might be given to all. We might become eternally righteous, perfect, with no spot or blemish in the sight of a holy God, a holy, holy, holy God who cannot regard evil, who cannot regard evil, but he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins, for all our rebellion against our creator. There is no other forgiveness. There is no other salvation. Praying five times a day to Mecca will not save your soul. Praying five times a day to Mecca will not save your soul. Your good works, weighing your good works against your bad works, will not save your soul. There is nothing you can do to earn your salvation. She says there's nothing for me to do, apart from one thing. Believe in the Lord Jesus, which is a gift. For the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. You may say, well, I think I'm a good person. God will let me into heaven. I think I deserve to go to heaven. I'm not as bad as Hitler. I'm not as bad as, as Stalin. I believe God should let me into heaven. But my friends, my friends, God must punish sin. God must punish our rebellion. Otherwise, he would not be a righteous judge. If God did not punish sin, then he would not be a holy and righteous God judge. But this is the good news, which has been passed down for us from generations, from hundreds, from 2,000 years, 